Finally, on Oscar night, a flight of fancy. The Aviators nominated for 11 Academy Awards after bringing the life of mogul Howard Hughes to the big screen for millions. Well, as ABC's Neil Karlinski reports, it also gave new life to one of the most audacious chapters in the history of flight. It is an unexpected resting place for an unlikely machine, part plane, part boat, squeezed into a specially built hangar in the middle of Oregon's wine country. Those who knew Howard Hughes best say if you want to know something about the Spruce Goose, know this. Hughes hated that nickname. I said, could, uh, could I go look at the Spruce Goose? He said, what's that? I said, you're, you're a wooden airplane. And he said, don't call it that, but you can see it. <laughs> I'm in here, 25 miles per hour. Today, the flying boat, as Hughes called it, is enjoying its greatest resurgence in decades. I didn't even know they had this plane like this until I saw the movie. It was half a century ago the world caught its first glimpse of the giant plane with wings longer than a football field. Launched from a dry dock, tail as tall as a five-story building. Human figures walk like Howard Hughes there. Critics who predicted the oversized seaplane would never get into the air were stunned when in 1947 it flew a little over a mile. And he lifted the greatest load of aircraft that ever flew. The Spruce Goose would never fly again. Hughes spent the next 30 years tinkering with it. His innovations in steering hydraulics and fire suppression were pioneering. This airplane, although it only flew once, has had an amazing contribution to aviation as a whole. And although it's called the Spruce Goose, it is really made mostly from birch. At the time, metal was needed for planes built to fight World War II. This, this lever is wood. That is wood. It doesn't look wood. It's wood. It is wood. It's wood. It's all wood. But if Hughes was convinced the Spruce Goose would fly, he was still worried it might not float. Designers were so concerned with the plane's weight, they thought it might actually sink, and solving the problem had nothing to do with building airplanes. They decided to fill the huge tail section here with hundreds of inflated beach balls. Strange yet inventive, like the man who built it. Neil Karlinski, ABC News, McMinnville, Oregon. The stuff that dreams are made on, you might call it.